What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today then we're going to be discussing what countries you should be drop shipping to. So in this video then we're just going to be going through this table which contains all the different countries then that ePacket ships to. It contains the average e-commerce conversion rate and we're going to be getting into where these numbers have come to or come from as well by the way and that English proficiency score as well which is basically a universal test that each country does and it tells you how good they are essentially at doing things in English like reading and writing. But before we get into the video then, as always, I am going to wait a free one-to-one -one call on this video. If you want to enter the raffle then, that will be announced tomorrow. All you've got to do is like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on my previous video, make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. So that being said, guys, let's get straight into the video. And as you can see, I've spent a lot of time putting this table together. And there was quite a few shocking things actually for myself. Um, definitely an eye opener in terms of different countries that I'm definitely now going to be experimenting with. So as I mentioned then, on the left hand side, as you can see, we've got all the different countries and this list of countries then simply come from ePacketExpress.com. Um, this is kind of like ePacket's official website. So any kind of information regarding ePacket, this is where I tend to come because it's coming from an official source. All I've done then is copy and pasted this list here, but I've taken away kind of like the traffic that is kind of that you would call low value traffic or traffic that just doesn't convert so places like israel um, indonesia anywhere in a kazakhstan anywhere in a trial run or just that typically is poor traffic um, that isn't going to convert i've removed from this list um, and then in terms of conversion rates um, I've used this study conducted by Oblo. Oblo, by the way, is a great place to get information. They've got an awesome, awesome blog um, with some really interesting posts because they're in the thick of it. They're involved in dropshipping. They're essentially the connection between AliExpress and Shopify. So they've got so much data going through their app. So when it comes to studies and things like this, it's a great place to essentially start your research. So this one particular study they did, um, it was just one particular store that had two and a half million visitors and it was a clothing and apparel or accessory store. So just consider that in mind. All these numbers, by the way, are kind of like a rough guesstimate, if you like. Um, when it comes to doing research, you need to take like a bigger picture of everything, which is what we're going to go through in this video. So as you can see, then they've been kind enough to list out all the different e-commerce conversion rates. Um, and these are the numbers then that are essentially in this table. Now, not all of the numbers, not all of the countries, sorry, are in the study. So I had to do my own research uh, just to fill in the gaps. But essentially, you get the idea. You can see on average then the traffic that come from the particular country, how much it would convert wise in a percentage. So for example, then Australia, for every 100 visitors, you would get 4.17 orders. Now, the next column, which is very important, is the English proficiency score because we don't want to be assuming you're watching this in English and you are English and you're advertising in English and your store is in English. Then obviously you only want to be advertising to people who speak the English language as well. So it would be a good idea then to only target those countries which have a high proficiency in English. And again, to get these, to get this rating, I used, is it not this website? Where are we? I've got tons of tags open. It was this website here. So it's kind of like the official um, EPI rating um, and as you can see it kind of gives every every um, country its own category whether it's very high high moderate low very low so this is where I got it from and by the way these actually break down into different scores as well so you can see the number one country was Sweden which has a EPI score of 70.72 and in terms of all the countries that don't have English as a native speaking language then Sweden scored the best so what I've done then on this table is simply just highlighted the the best of the bunch essentially. So all the ones in green then essentially have a conversion rate over 3% and they have a very high proficiency score, which is kind of like the two key points that we want, the two key factors when choosing a country. So, and this is what was quite shocking to me in fact, because there's countries on this list in green that I never even considered. So um, Australia, I do um, sell to Australia. So that was kind of obvious. Um, in terms of the conversion rate, it was one of the highest as well, which I didn't think would be the case. But also you've got Canada, which we talk about a lot, but then you've got Denmark and Finland, which have a really high proficiency, which again, I didn't know, which I found quite interesting. But then look at the conversion rate as well, 4.67%. I think that's even the best on the list. So this table is a great place to start your research or just the idea of this video then is just to kind of spark ideas and get you thinking kind of outside the box instead of just sticking to the UK, the US, Canada then think of these European countries that have like seven, eight, nine, ten out of people that actually speak English quite well um, and therefore would be interested in your product. 
you only have to kind of do your research around YouTube and you'll see that not many people are talking about these kind of countries and therefore there's not going to be a lot of people advertising in this country. So this potentially like a little gold mine that you can kind of capture that market and be like the majority yep, marketer within that country, if that makes sense. So you've also got Finland as well. Again, a good conversion rate, very high proficiency. You've got Ireland and you've got Norway. And just to kind of illustrate my point, if we have a look at the UK and US, you can see the US converts pretty decent. The UK is actually very low um, and then obviously they're high English proficiency. So assuming this table is accurate, if you took your product now, obviously, it's going to vary by niche. If you took your product and took it to any one of these countries, then your conversion rate should increase and you should make more money. However, it's not obviously that straightforward, um, and I'm going to tell you why now. In fact, just a quick note then before we get into that, um, I've highlighted the best of the bunch in green. That doesn't mean you only have to focus on the ones in green. Like places like Belgium, pretty much anywhere that has a high English proficiency score is definitely worth experimenting and testing with. However, one thing to mention is that when you do go to create your ad set, your campaign, whatever, um, put your location in and then just make sure you put English all in the languages. And that way it's going to make sure you are only tagged in the people who have English listed as a language within that country. So just to illustrate my point, um, we've got the Netherlands here. You can see the potential reach is 6.6 .6 million and I've got English as a language. So if I just get rid of English, you can see it goes up to 11 million people. So there's potentially 4 million people-ish in that audience that don't have English listed as a language and therefore we want to avoid those people. So just make sure you have English all in this box here. So I mentioned earlier in the video then that this table is a good starting point but it's not the be all and end all. It's certainly not written in stone and it's certainly not guaranteed. Like just because the conversion rates are higher for Denmark it doesn't mean that is likely is 100% going to convert more than other countries. You need to take everything else into comparison. So just some numbers to kind of think about uh, where are we? So this website here, so who spends the most in line? Uh, number one thing I want to show you in fact is that by 2021 e-commerce sales are estimated to rise to 4.5 trillion so the market is very healthy, more and more people are spending money online so anyone who says that things like e-com is dying off or Shopify is dying off um, I just don't think that's the case, if anything it's just going to get more and more stronger and people are just going to start buying more and more things online like people didn't used to buy their shopping online like food but now they do, Amazon have obviously in the last few years started doing Amazon Pantry where you can buy food. Um, so I'm kind of going off topic here, but yeah, e-commerce is definitely not dying off. So you're definitely not going into a business, into a market that is shrinking, it's only growing. So the point of showing you this website then was this, who spends the most online? So this is the e-commerce spend per capita. Um, so again, you can cross-reference these numbers against the table I've just shown you and the same kind of country is going to start coming up And if you see the same country coming up on multiple websites, then that's a good indicator That's a good country um, to go out and essentially target So just start from the bottom then Germany again. I think that was on the list um, as pretty decent conversion and high proficiency um, Japan Canada was on there obviously Australia was on there France um, I don't think France was in green but 2.66, that's still pretty decent. It's above average combining um, all of these countries. But in fact, it only has a moderate proficiency, actually. So in fact, I would stay away from that. Um, but then you've got the US and the UK. Um, and this surprised me as well, because when I show you this next website, you'll see that, that even though the UK spend more per capita, by the way, that just means per person, essentially, that the US still absolutely dominates um, the Shopify market. And just to show you then again, back to Obolo, these guys have a first-hand involvement in these stats because obviously they're the ones process that the orders are going through. And just look at this. I know it's a, a year old, two years old, but things aren't going to change that drastically between two years. And just look at the 2017 total orders. So that's not including the US. You can see that Great Britain is kind of like dominating it. So essentially to pick a good country, you want one that's got high proficiency, um, a high conversion rate, but a low total orders because then that shows you that it's a really kind of fluid country that's not, no, liquidated, that's not the word either. I don't know what word I'm looking for, but basically it tells you that that country is going to convert really well. And if there's not a lot of orders in it, then that shows you there's not a lot of people taking advantage of that market. So just look here, Australia is obviously a good one, Canada, France, Denmark, that was on the list. Denmark would be a really good market to go into because it's a small percentage of the total orders, which tells us that not many people are advertising to that country, but then we know that it's a high proficiency and we know it's really high converting as well. So Denmark is definitely a country, my myself, my myself, 
uh, myself will be experimenting in because um, I had no idea. I don't think Denmark even crossed my mind at all. At all. And same with Italy and Netherlands as well. However, just to kind of illustrate how powerful the US is and how competitive it is compared to other countries, look at the 2017 total orders. The US just absolutely dominates every single other country. And just to kind of, as they say, let's splice it another way. This is the US versus the rest of the world. So if you can sell the current product you're selling and sell it profitably in the US, then you're gonna make just a killing um, in other countries as well. So definitely start scaling your business into other countries. All that being said, the guys, I think I've just about covered everything I wanted to in the video. Um, hopefully I've given you the idea of what I'm trying to put across. Um, if not, then please do leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to clear any kind of confusions up. Now, if you wanna go one step further and you wanna start advertising to countries in different languages, um, that have high conversion rates but low proficiency, then a simple search of translate in the Shopify app store and there's just multiple apps to choose. Um, for example, then Weglot um, will transfer your store into multiple languages so you can take advantage of that. But obviously make sure you have your Facebook ads translated as well. And that being said then guys, that's gonna wrap the video up. If you're still watching, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, all I ask then is please do leave a like on the video. And of course, if you wanna be entered into that raffle to win the call with me, um, then make sure you leave a comment down below as well. And that being said, guys, let's get into announcing the winner of the previous.